QuickBooks Online 2023 e-commerce Shopify Amazon eBay overview get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023 support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it when thinking about e-commerce we're usually thinking about businesses and sole proprietors that sell physical items inventory that is with the help and use of online web-based applications popular applications including for example shopify and amazon although there could be many others that would fall into this general kind of scenario these web-based applications like a shopify and amazon helping to facilitate the logistics of the e-commerce business providing an online presence to facilitate the sales oftentimes and providing help with the log the logistics in order to fulfill the sales we want to think about this from the accounting perspective now and more specifically from the perspective of someone using quickbooks online how does that fit into the picture so what are the accounting objectives of the e-commerce business then like with many other businesses the general objective is to get financial information into a useful format that's usually going to be financial statements including a balance sheet income statement and related reports why do we have to do that well if you're in the United States one reason you need to do that is to help fulfill your federal income tax obligation so if you're a sole proprietorship you at least need an income statement in order to prepare for example a schedule c most likely being required for your sole proprietorship type of business for federal income taxes and if you're another kind of business entity then you might have both the balance sheet and the income statement that you'll need to populate basically for taxes however from an accounting perspective if you're using software you usually have a lot more accuracy because you'll be using the double entry accounting system and you'll be able to generate both the balance sheet and the income statement it's usually a lot more accurate than just trying to create for example a schedule c an income statement without a balance sheet you can track sales tax information to comply with sales tax laws so sales tax when we're thinking about the united states uh, has different tax requirements for different states and localities and that of course adds a lot of complication when we're thinking about an e-commerce type of store to see if we're subject to sales tax in different locations and how are we going to be able to collect the sales tax and remit the sales tax that we need to be dealing with so we'll try to dive into that in uh, a little bit of detail in future presentations generate useful data for decision making now obviously if you're a small business you might be focused more on simply building the store and making sales and then trying to comply with the federal tax requirements but obviously as you grow you're going to need more and more accurate information to make good decisions about what kind of inventory you want to sell and what's going to be the price of the inventory so the more accurate your financial statements hopefully that will lead to more and better decisions about price points and so on and types of inventory that might be good for an e-commerce business track inventory for decision making and for taxes so obviously when we're talking about an e-commerce business that actually sells inventory we've got that added level of complexity we have to deal with tracking inventory which is more of a problem or more difficult than a service-based type of business oftentimes because we often have to do an accrual type of thing recording the inventory as an asset and then tracking of course the the inventory so we want to think about how are we going to do that from a quickbooks perspective when we have this e-commerce platform that's facilitating uh, the sales for example integrate applications for ease of use so clearly when we have this other application 
like a Shopify or Amazon that is filling, fulfilling the logistics of fulfilling the orders, for example, we would like to be able to do some integration between possibly a, a Shopify or an Amazon, for example, and possibly with our banking system to pull in basically the bank feeds. And then we also could have other applications that add a little other layer of confusion, such as the payment processing, like a PayPal and a Stripe, those kinds of services. Okay, so let's look at this from a business owner's perspective. So most people, if you are like a sole proprietor and you're starting up a Shopify store, clearly your objectives aren't usually on the accounting. It's revenue generation. You want the Shopify store in order for it to start to generate sales, obviously. Uh, picking products, clearly people that have a Shopify store that are quite good at it are usually the ones that are quite good at picking the right products, making their website uh, look very nice, setting up their store. So they're going to be focused a lot on if they sell uh, with, with a website or like a Shopify, then of course, making the store look very nice and all that kind of stuff. Advertising is usually where the focus is going to be, not so much on accounting to make the tax man happy, right? So oftentimes these are going to be very, uh, people that are quite creative on, on advertising revenue. That's where the interest lies and they're not so focused oftentimes on the accounting and that can kind of take a backseat. Uh, to some degree, obviously, when they're when you're a small business and you're trying to start a Shopify store, that's where your priorities kind of should be, because if there's no revenue, then the accounting doesn't doesn't really matter all that much. You don't have really any tax obligations or, or, or anything. But obviously, as the business grows, then these things uh, become more and more relevant and they can start to become overwhelming. Uh, once the business gets to a certain size and, and these other kind of things haven't been handled, like the accounting, like the taxes and that kind of stuff. So get financial information into useful format financial statements. So that's one of our objectives to try to get that financial information into a useful format. That's going to be the balance sheet and the income statement. That's what software typically like a, like a QuickBooks financial software is designed to do. So it usually requires integrations with financial software like QBO. So what we're going to need to do then is now you've got your QuickBooks software. Now, obviously, if you were just running like a service business or if, if you were selling inventory like physical in a physical inventory instead of in an online type of situation, then you can enter your financial data as they happen into uh, QuickBooks online. But obviously all the sales that are happening are being facilitated on another web-based application and and so now then we have to pull in some information from the other applications into quickbooks that's going to require some integrations and the kinds of integrations we can imagine is well can i connect quickbooks to like so the shopify and the amazon possibly but then there's the bank that's involved too so we might have to connect to the bank and then you've got the payment processors like PayPal's and Stripe's and whatnot. So we, we can think of integrations, but it's not quite so easy. We can think about a whole lot of different types of integrations that might happen depending on the, the particulars of a business. So we'll get in. That's one of the big things that obviously is quite important to get this right, not get overwhelmed. When thinking about pulling this information into QuickBooks Online, it's useful to think about two main buckets and keep them separate in our mind. One type of transaction being the sales side of transactions, the revenue side of transactions. And on the other hand, in the other bucket, the transactions related to tracking inventory and cost of goods sold. Now, if you have an accounting background and you're thinking about a perpetual inventory system, you might be saying, hey, wait a second. Those two things are basically related because when I sell some inventory, what should happen at that time is the sales should go up, revenue should go up, and the other side cash or accounts receivable should go up, inventory should go down, and the related cost of goods sold should go up. All that should happen at the same point in time in a perpetual inventory system. However, oftentimes it's useful to think of more of a periodic type of inventory system when we're trying to pull in this financial data because the sales side of the transaction is usually something that we might be able to pull in from 
actually Amazon or a Shopify, wherever the sales are happening and or from the related bank accounts on the deposit side of things, depending on how much sophistication we want to put into our system. And then on the inventory side of things, usually the software platforms that we are using are not tracking the actual dollar amounts of inventory in the format that we would need, like first in, first out, or a weighted average kind of method. So we have to come up with some kind of method to track the inventory where we might use more of a periodic kind of inventory system, or we might try to pull all that data into our accounting system. So those are some of the uh, concepts that we'll get into in a little bit more detail going forward. But let's just give an overview of the sales side of the transaction. So now we're talking about the bucket of trying to record revenue and the other side of the sales transaction will ultimately be cash, right? So we're selling something on Shopify or Amazon at the point of sale. We're actually getting paid at that point in time. The problem is that there could be other things involved at that point of sale other than just cash collecting such, such as fees. So how can we pull in this sales data into QuickBooks so we can get our financial statements? Well, there's going to be very, this is where the variation comes in. How, how sophisticated do we want to be in doing this? There's pros and cons of different methods. So data can be pulled in with the bank feeds. So the easiest method is you just say, I'm just going to wait till it hits the bank. I'm not going to connect to Shopify or Amazon directly from QuickBooks online. I don't want all these integrations. It hits the bank. I'm going to record it as revenue when it hits the bank. That's easy. Nice. However, there's problems with that method and we'll get into more of the problems in the future. Uh, obviously one problem is that it, it doesn't, it doesn't add all the other, uh, other breakouts that could happen before the money hits the bank. So you could have fees, you could have uh, chargebacks and all these other kind of things that happen at the platform level and possibly at the level of the payment processor if you're using an Amazon or a Stripe. So by the time the money hits your bank account, you're, you're grouping it as, as if like, like, let's say you had a thousand dollar sale. And by the time it hits your bank account, it's only $800 and you're recording $800 as revenue. What should have happened is you should have recorded a thousand dollars as revenue. And then the fees and the chargebacks and the re whatever the, all the other stuff is as like an expense or, or a contra revenue account or something like that. Right. So, so that's, that's going to be the the issue with it so uh we'll get so we'll get into some some other different methods that we could use so we could connect to the bank or we could try to connect directly to the platforms themselves like the amazon platform and the shopify platform uh but then that adds a, another level of complication because now we have uh, multiple things that we're connected to the bank and then the platforms and then we also have this kind of issue if there's third party processors like like a Stripe or a PayPal. So we'll get into more of those options uh, in future presentations. Now let's talk about the inventory bucket. This is the other one that we'll dive into more in future presentations. So we'll kind of try to break these out uh, in our as we as we dig into them in more detail, the sales side of things, what are the different options for the sales side? I could use a simple cash based method. I could try to connect to, to Amazon Shopify. I can use different kind of apps to do that, possibly QuickBooks uh, uh, itself uh, to do that. I can use like a manual type of method to try to pull the information in from Shopify in. So we'll talk more about that later and then we'll get in to the inventory side of things. So usually we need to track inventory on an accrual basis. In other words, if you're, if you're dealing with inventory, the problem with inventory is that when I buy the inventory, I can't normally just expense it or I'm not supposed to, right? If I buy the inventory, if I just write it off to cost of goods sold, that's not usually what's supposed to happen because you're supposed to put it on the books as an asset. And then when you sell the asset, you're gonna move it from inventory to the expense account of cost of goods sold. The problem with that from from our kind of, our, our easy method is that we're usually using a cash-based method to make it easy. Meaning I would like to record the uh, inventory as an expense when I purchase it so that when it goes out of my bank account, I can just record it as an expense. 
the fact that I need to put it on the books as an asset, or that's what we should be doing generally, makes it more difficult because now what's the trigger? It's harder to get that triggering factor to decrease the inventory and record the expense. We also have a tracking problem because the same unit or kind of inventory could have changed in cost over time, which leads to these flow assumptions like a first in, first out, and a weighted average or common types of flow assumptions. So there's more or less sophisticated ways that we can deal with that problem that we'll get into in a whole nother kind of series or sections of the course. So therefore, simply using bank feeds will not be enough to track inventory properly. So, I mean, we could try to do that, right? We could try to say, I'm just gonna write off as I pay for the inventory into cost of goods sold. But we're, we're gonna have to have some method to account for inventory and cost of goods sold, at least if we're trying to report our taxes properly, because usually you're gonna have to, you're gonna have, to have a cost of goods sold calculation, even if you're a sole proprietorship to file the proper taxes. So however, uh, we, we can apply many different methods from less sophisticated to very sophisticated to deal with inventory tracking. So you can imagine different methods you might use for, for inventory tracking. And you can imagine trying to track inventory within QuickBooks Online, but that gets a little bit messy because QuickBooks Online uh, is not really built to track inven inventory in an e-commerce kind of situation. You might have some integrations that can do it, but it might not be the, the best way to go. And it could, if you sell a lot of inventory, weigh down the transactions that you're pulling into QuickBooks Online. So then we could do other, we can have other types of methods to track inventory, possibly using third-party software, possibly using Excel sheets, possibly we can try to expense basically inventory when we purchase it and then try to account for the ending inventory periodically, do adjustments for ending inventory. So we'll talk about uh, those types of methods. So from a logistic standpoint, we need to make sure we have sufficient quantity to meet orders. Now, obviously, when you're thinking about inventory, there's two main things that are going in people's heads, mainly the people that, are, that, are, that built the Shopify store, their mind is on revenue generation, obviously, and they're thinking, I want to track inventory and make sure I have inventory in my store so that when people order stuff, I can fulfill the order logistically. So that's where clearly someone's head's going to be when they're trying to make money with an e-commerce store. From our standpoint, on the accounting side of things, we want to, we want to be able to track inventory properly on the financial statements, at least for tax preparation, and also so that, so that when we're deciding what inventory to purchase, what should be the price of the inventory, and how much should we charge for the inventory, those decisions can be made better. So again, usually someone that's a that's using making an e-commerce store is quite good at picking inventory uh, that might be a, a sellable item, for example, and making a beautiful advertising sales funnel possibly and then and then a nice web page and that kind of stuff may not be quite as good at at measuring exactly what the sales price of the inventory should be to maximize both the quantity of sales and and their profit margins uh, and that's difficult to do if you don't have if you don't have accurate financial uh, statements that can kind of help you with that side of things otherwise you're kind of flying blind from from an accounting standpoint we will need to report inventory and cost of goods sold for taxes at the very least so even if you're a small business, at the very least, and we, we could try to do a, uh, you could try to do a simple kind of method. You're gonna you're gonna at least need to report uh, ending inventory and cost of goods sold on a yearly basis for uh, uh, tax preparation. Okay, so what are gonna be some of the issues here? So usually we're talking about the store is where the point of sale happens, and you might use a, sh a Shopify, an Amazon, an eBay, or something like that. Obviously, if you're using like a Shopify, for example, the, the, you, that app helps you to have an online presence, helps you to facilitate the sale. And then some of the tracking of like the inventory and whatnot is gonna be in Shopify, but it's usually gonna be by quantity, not by not tracking like cost on the first in, first out or last and that, and that kind of thing, because the goal is to facilitate the order, making sure you have what is needed to fulfill the logistical needs 
of meeting the orders and, and making the sales. Now, then you, you might have an intermediary like a payment processing, like a PayPal or a Stripe, and then you've got the QuickBooks uh, software, or you could use like a zero or something similar kind uh, of system. Now, now the issue again is going to be, well, how can I get this information into the accounting software? Because if it was an online, if it was an on ground store, I would enter the data as I make the purchases and make the sales into QuickBooks software. But now the sales are being facilitated on the Shopify or Amazon side of things. They're the ones that have all the sales records and I don't want to recreate invoices, all the invoices and whatnot in account in the accounting software. I want to pull that information in. How could I do that? Well, you could, you could try to just connect your accounting software to your bank again, and just wait till it comes for, through the bank but you're losing a lot of detail to do that because you're gonna be missing the fees and all that kind of stuff that's gonna be associated with the store. You could try to try to connect the accounting software to the Shopify, Amazon, or eBay using either third-party applications or possibly QuickBooks Online, which, is, which, which are, some have very good integrations, but you gotta be careful on which software you're gonna use However, even then you could run into issues if you're using a payment processor like a PayPal or a Stripe. In other words, if you connect directly to say like a Shopify store, for example, you might be using the Shopify pay in order to help facilitate uh, your payment when people buy stuff. And in that case, everything's happening through Shopify. So when you pull in that data into your accounting software, then any chargebacks and all that kind of stuff should be coming directly from the, the the website you're making the sale on into the accounting software. However, if you have this intermediary platform like a PayPal or Stripe that's helping to facilitate the sale, you might have some chargebacks or some fees that are happening on this payment level. And if you're, so you're gonna be missing those if you're just looking at the store connection into QuickBooks. So that's where the added level of, of complexity uh, uh, can come into play on that middle, that middle tier. And then also again, the inventory is typically gonna be tracked at Shopify, Amazon, or eBay, at least the quantity of inventory, you're gonna try to populate the quantity of inventory in order to make sure you can logistically fulfill the inventory needs. However, when you pull that information into the accounting software, we need to convert it to dollar amounts and usually use some kind of flow assumption to do that, such as a first in first out or a weighted average kind of assumption. So those are gonna be some of the issues we'll talk about. And in future presentations, what we will do is think about the normal inventory flow as if you're not doing a Shopify store, but rather on ground store and then as we think about that flow, we're going to think about the, the, the variance, the things that are different in an e-commerce store, and then how we can basically uh, fulfill the needs of the e-commerce store, which are going to be a little bit different once we've identified what those issues are.